written. I'm not pink diamond. I'm worse. I'm not pink diamond. I'm worse. I'm not pink diamond. I'm worse. That was all he knew. He was back, but he wasn't better. Not in the slightest. I'm not pink diamond. I'm worse. I'm not pink diamond. I'm worse. I'm not pink diamond. I'm worse. He couldn't stop speaking those words. They were the truest truth that he'd ever known. He rambled on and on with a stale tongue, shivering weakly, his breaths labored and broken apart into sharp panting like he'd forgotten how to draw an air. He couldn't stop shaking. He couldn't respond to Nephrite's questions. He could barely register that he wasn't corrupted anymore. Wait, where was he? What was happening? He felt sand underneath him. He could smell the ocean. He could barely connect that those things meant home. He couldn't recall much except for the excruciating agony. Some of it was still lingering, like caught spider webs all over his body. He didn't know what was going on. He just wanted it to stop. Stephen! Stephen! A familiar, desperate cry finally shocked him out of his trance, the recognizable voice reaching him through the whirlpool of dark, crushing terror that he'd been pulled inside. Was... was Stephen his name? No, it, it was Pink, right? No, no, wait, no, he was Stephen. He was Stephen. That was what he'd been trying to tell everyone all this time. Stephen lifted his head warily, his vision still blurred and sprinkled with lights. He could barely see the fuzzy dot that was calling his name, held by a giant woman. He watched Mint Diamond stumble une uneasily to shore, falling only a few steps from the sand. As she did, she burst apart into light, unraveling into the three separate diamonds, white, yellow, and blue. In doing that, they dropped the crystal gems into the shallow water, forcing them to wade the rest of the way. A pudgy, balding human man broke out into a run almost the instant that he regained his footing, splashing up onto the beach with the others not far behind. He nearly plowed him over in his desperation to get to him, and Stephen felt himself smothered in a strong, yearning hug. Greg, human father. Almost immediately, he felt his gem's invasive thoughts rush through him like adrenaline, blanking out every other thought, demanding, DANGER! 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 ATTACK! LET GO! KILL! His skin was glowing pink again. He could feel his heart throbbing, his breath shortened. The familiar, awful terror set in. The warmth in his gem spread to the rest of his body, threatening to- NO! Stephen's fear snapped him out of the flooding torrent of thoughts. No! S stay back! You can't! Please, no! He had to warn them. He was going to- He pushed his dad and Nephrite away with prickling urgency, feeling like he had active bombs wrapped around his waist. Whoa, Stephen, you're okay! Calm down! Everything's gonna be fine! His dad tried, reaching out again, hesitantly. He didn't understand. He didn't see Stephen as a threat at all. He just saw his son. But his gem saw danger. Terrible, unavoidable, life-ending danger. Stephen! He saw garnet, amethyst, pearl, bismuth, lapis, peridot, spinel, volleyball, everyone, even the diamonds. They were sprinting towards him, having no idea the risk that they were putting themselves through. He couldn't be this close to his family. He had to protect them from his gem. His stupid, paranoid, overpowered gem. So, instead of a happy reunion of group hugs and smiling thanks and tearful reassurances, Stephen raised his hands and shoved all of the aggressive power that he was feeling into a bubble. It swelled outwards from his body, pushing Greg and his gem family away, expanding wide as a dome of sparkling pink magic. It was thick and resilient, pulsing with crackling energy, protecting them from himself as he struggled to draw breath. It was less of a shield for him and more of a shield for the rest of the world. He was inside of a big pink snow globe, and his family was trapped on the other side. Safe. He could hear his gem in his thoughts. It was trying to take over his mind, insisting that it knew what was best for him, promising that it only wanted to protect him. It was like another person, a second consciousness, stuck to his like a parasite. Or was he the parasite? He didn't know. He didn't want to know. Stephen, what are you doing? We're not gonna hurt you. Just drop the bubble. Please, Stubal, we can help! The voices were muffled beyond the defensive pink dome, the echoing knocking of their fists only just reaching his ringing butterfly-filled ears. But he couldn't let them in. Never. If he did, they'd all be killed, all because of... I hate you, he hissed down at his gem, the loathing feeling like a poison coursing through his veins. It began to pick up strength, the boiling, rioting anger eating him up from the inside out. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, this is all your fault! His family had relapsed into surprised silence, watching from where they couldn't reach him. Stephen looked down at himself. Where there used to be hands, there were rough paws. 
Fingers were replaced by pink claws as long as daggers. He was covered in patches of scales like someone had thrown a bucket of the stuff onto him. He could feel spine splitting out of his spine, his arms, his shoulders. Two horns sprouted from the top of his head, tusks curled around his fang-stuffed mouth. A monster. He was a monster. Did, did he corrupt? Those looked like corruption scars. There were so many. Why were there so many? Was, was he still corrupted right now? Panic began to spread freezing tendrils through his veins. He was bent over, staring at his talons, blinking with eyes that felt too big for his face. He made an animalistic wailing noise of terror, shaking his head, his multiple legs kicking out behind him. What was he? What was happening? He felt something wrap around him from below, looking down to realize that Connie's thinner, darker, scaleless arms were holding him tightly as if they were trying to hug him. But he couldn't hear her thoughts in his head, at least not past the blaring ones of his gem. That was what this had started at. Connie. He still didn't know if there was hope of her survival. He just wanted Connie back. The stinging, aching longing in his chest was trumped only by the devastating guilt that he felt for her death. His gem killed her, all because he wasn't able to control it. His Stephen arms wrapped around the Connie arms in return, curling over with his head low and his mutated eyes screwed shut. He couldn't take this anymore. It was all too heavy, too bright, too loud. What was he going to do now? Connie... I'm sorry, Stephen whimpered, his voice drenched with mourning and regret. I don't want to see you go. I thought I thought I could make things right. Pain rippled through him, making him squeeze himself even tighter, almost squashed under the weight of it all. How would he fix this? How would he ever be normal again? How would tomorrow come at all? Two heartbeats throbbed through him, the rhythm nearly washed out by the loud hum of his screaming gem trying to overtake his thoughts. He listened and thought. And then, an idea enlightened his expression. Stephen sat up, a clean new look to his mangled face. His eyes were distant and calculating, excitement trickling through a crooked smile. He knew what to do. I can make things right, Stephen said, his voice low and breathless. I can make everything right. His gaze landed back on his navel, an eager grin crossing his features. His claws crawled to the rosy pink gem, touching the warm, smooth surface with a shudder. I just need to get rid of her, Stephen realized, stinging acid dripping from his words. Stephen? Stephen, what are you- His family's unsettled questions meant nothing. Neither did Garnet's terrified shriek. Stephen, don't! His gem's voice in his skull became afraid, switching to shrill pleads the moment that he brushed the glittering jewel with his claws. Stephen, wait, no, no, you don't know what you're doing, please! He didn't care. His whisper was like a solid ice wall, unmoving for anybody. This is for everything you put me through. Stephen plunged his talons into the scarred skin around his gem, latched on tight, and pulled. <laughs>